What's up, D Buzz? What's up, D Bos? It's your girl, and I'm back, and it's Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, but it's time for a real talk video. So when y'all get this, it'll be tomorrow, Wednesday. I hope you all are having like a really great day. Happy Wednesday. Happy whatever day you are watching this. I hope you guys have like a really great day. So it's Tuesday, and here I am. I really, you know what? I hope you guys are having a really great day. Um let me tell you, this week has been funny, and I, I got something to share with you guys, okay? Let me tell you guys, I really have something to share, and I was going to wait to tell you guys, but it's funny how things work out. It's not even funny how things work out, but yes. So let me tell you, first of all, y'all know, I, I had to go back and get me back to the iced coffees. Um, I haven't had iced coffee in so long. You guys know I always was doing like drinking the iced coffees in my videos. I love Dunkin' Donuts. And I stopped messing with them, effing with them, is because the one that I used to go to every single day, opening up these new little packaging right here is what I'm doing. Sheen, she, she glam, Sheen, then sent me some more makeup. What I told y'all the last time, can I get a fucking outfit? Like seriously, can I get a fucking outfit? But um, they sent me some of their new translucent setting powders um yeah and a and a sponge to put it on with which is just like a, a makeup sponge but cute packaging but anyway so um i stopped effing with dunkin donuts because the one that i would go go to on a daily every single day certain people stop working there which made the coffee become just unbearable like I'm, I'm tired of telling you how to make my coffee do i need to just come and make it for myself and get like a like a little um discount or something so i got tired of doing that and um look i'm just showing you as i'm talking i went i started going to another dunkin donuts like i told y'all this dunkin donuts was by the car wash the car wash was included in it which was great because i paid 15 dollars, 15 or 12 dollars a month for unlimited car washes up to three times a day every day whatever so i would go there i'll get my car wash you know go shit like that um their coffee was great but then them same people they stopped working there and then they got some new people started making it really shitty, really shitty. So I went back to the original place and they have some new people working there. And obviously they know how to run the machine with a little bit of assistance. Okay. So, right. They did have to make my coffee over because it, this is a, a cold brew, which is dark coffee. The coffee was lighter than my ass. Okay. Lighter than me. So like, look, neither here nor there they got a new dunkin donuts opening up like it's a mile and a half two miles from my house just the same distance closer okay and i'm waiting for them to finish making it so that way i could just bring my ass up there that's why i stopped effing with them plus you know i'm trying to lose some weight but anyway so that was my morning this is actually really nice this is the she glam insta ready face face and under eye setting power duo so look it came really nicely packaged on the top you have like a pressed powder and this this looks like what is the color um smooth sand okay i guess that's their way of saying banana because that's what it looks like to me but that's the one part and then i guess i'm you untwist it and here goes the other part where there's the setting powder. This is cool. This is pretty damn decent. I like this whole concept. This is nice. They didn't give like a puff powder thing with it. You oh, because you they got the sponge right there that I'm about to show you. Duh, April. But I like their packaging. They be having like the cutest packaging. She glam. Look at that. But I, I'm just saying she glam. Like I, I'm I'm fine with all the makeup stuff. Like I love the makeup stuff. I do. I love makeup. I, I love it to a, to an extent. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not going out and going ham and going crazy over getting some new makeup or buying any new makeup but you know what i'm saying got a nice little mirror up here i got that little thing over it so that's why you can't see it but um really nice um but i i you know what i would like a new outfit too to go with the new makeup look but anyway um so they sent me two one is color sh smooth sand and the other one is translucent so anyway um so that was what i did um this morning but let me tell y'all so remember last last monday i did real talk on monday of last week i did real talk okay and that's the normal days for me sometimes i slip up and get lazy and do it on a tuesday but like today but because i had a lot to do yesterday yesterday was my eldest son's birthday so you know so last monday we did real talk well i did real talk and y'all watched on wednesday and i was telling y'all about the fedex guy right so let me tell y'all on tuesday tuesday morning I went to the vein doctor 
just to get a checkup because, you know, on Thursdays they go and they inject me. So I go there and as I'm pulling up there, I get a text message from Paul Go, which is the people that come in the mobile van and cut my dog's hair. They groom, you know, mobile grooming. So she's telling me she's on her way and she'll be there in 15 minutes. And I'm like, they didn't even send me a reminder appointment, but okay. Cause Nay was at home. So this is the translucent one. So Nay was at home. So, so, um, I let Nay know and she was still, you know, she was still there when I got back home. My appointment was only like 10 minutes because all they do is just look at my legs, um, and map it real quick with the gel and then send me on my way. So I'd be out of there like within 15, 20 minutes. So I went home by the time I got home, you know what I'm saying? She was still grooming pancakes here in the mobile van. And um, so I just sat and left the door open. Like, you know, I have two doors for the outside. One is like a gate door and another is the regular door. So sometimes I leave the regular door open and just leave the gate door open so I can get fresh air in the house, you know. And mind you, I also did this because the doorbell stopped working. One of those plug-in doorbells stopped working. So I'm like, just let me leave this open for the day for a couple of hours. So that way I know when she's done with pancakes, she won't have to be banging on the door. She gave me pancake back after like probably like 15 minutes after I've been home. And I still leave the door open with the gate closed because it's nice and cool kind of like out. Let me get some fresh air in the house. You know what I'm saying? So me and Pancake, we sitting on the couch. We just chilling watching um, the ID channel. Now, mind you, the doorbell don't work. So I still got the door open. And it's probably like... 20 minutes later after Pancake done came in and I hear a man's voice. So I'm like, who the hell is that? So I go to the door, you know, I can see you right there. As soon as I walk into another part of the house, there you go. Cause the gate is closed, but the door is open. It's a FedEx kid, FedEx kid. Cause he's a young, a young man, he's probably like in his early twenties. He's standing at the door with my package. So this time they didn't run the, ring the doorbell and, uh, and run off, I guess. Cause you can't ring the doorbell, but he could have banged on the, the gate and just took off but he didn't even do that he just stood there and waited to set his piece whatever he said to let me know that he was standing there and I you know I opened the door I said can I ask you something and he was like yes so then I asked him I said do you know Rich um the other FedEx guy he's like yeah the one who used to you know deliver here tall guy like brawly heavy set and I was like yeah and he was like yeah you know he asked me why so I told him you know so he was like well I can give you his number I didn't ask for the number I told him I was going to give him um just to give him a message probably like within a few hours later I had texted him you know hey uh, how you doing this is April um Garden Lakes hope you remember who I am right so he was like um Garden Lakes and I was like you gave me your number and I had to and he said, I know who you are, silly. I know this is. So basically, we was talking through via text message. And he was like, I'm so delighted, is his exact words. I'm delighted that you texted me, um, or whatever. So, you know, basically, he asked me, was I doing anything later? And I was like, no, I'm busy. And on Wednesday, I was busy too. So this is on a Tuesday. So Thursday, you know, we had made plans to meet at this restaurant in the afternoon at 12 o'clock called Borello Queen. Two hours was good enough for me because, you know what I'm saying, when I say two hours, because it's 12 o'clock at 2 o'clock, I got to get Mumsy from school. And it's a cool restaurant. It's like a Mexican restaurant. You know, they have beer, um, probably wine, um, tacos, you know, like Mexican foods like that. Thursday morning, as I was going home from my vein treatment i get a text message it's 9 30 in the morning talking about are you are you looking at the time as much as me i'm so excited i was like oh that's so sweet and i didn't really respond with anything because like i wasn't looking at the time like that so anyway we get there and I'm, i meet him there he's he's like right in front on his big old motorcycle he's like you know standing by it waiting and um he sees me get out of the car and he comes up to me he gives me like you know hey welcome hug or whatever and he was like all smiling and stuff. And then he pulls a rose out of like this compartment on his um, motorcycle. We walk inside, you know, that was really nice. That was a nice gesture. We walk inside. And one thing that I don't like is, okay, you're really tall. You're like hovering over me tall. You don't have to like, when you, well, you know, when you walk on somebody, they just got their hands on like your back. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Do not do that to me. I don't like that. Especially if I don't know you like that. So I moved away. You know what I'm saying? I moved away and then we sat down. We went aside. I sat down. We sat down. We were just sitting there talking. Now, we was just conversating. But the one thing that I noticed about him is you'll ask me a question and then when you answer it, you just like cut me off. Like, that's so fucking rude. But I really, I tried to be like really like, um patient with it. You know what I'm saying? With that part that I didn't like. So I just, you know, like overlooked it and 
kept talking and then had to repeat myself. But I didn't pay no mind like that because I'm like, well, maybe he's just a little excited or whatever. Who knows? You know, some people talk a lot when they get excited or that, you know what I'm saying? Nervous. So I'm thinking like, okay, well, I'm not really going to look into that too deep, like too hard. So we just talking and we having a good old conversation. We talked about Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Like when I tell you, he asked me about what kind of foods I like to eat out. And I was telling him like, I like fast food. I like this. And he was like, and I, I didn't get a fit. I didn't get a moment to finish until when he cut me up and he was like, what about the chicken sandwich from Popeye's? He was like, have you ever tried that? Y'all know I love Popeye's chicken sandwich. So, you know, I was like, you know, I love Popeye's chicken sandwich. And he was like telling me how he had four of them the night prior. I'm like, okay, that's a lot of motherfucking chicken sandwiches. But I'm, you know, I could probably eat, I could smash two, but you know, cause you're bigger than me. So, you know, Hey, I didn't think nothing of it. You know, we still sitting there talking. And then he asked me, <sighs> I definitely like avoided this question. Like didn't really look too much into it. I kind of like let it go, like fly over my shoulder. Kind of like thing. He said to me, don't I miss being intimate with someone? And I was like, what? That was my first response. And then I was like, no, I don't be miss in being intimate with anyone. I said, why would I miss that? All I want to do is go to sleep at night. That's what I like to do. Because th that's what the fuck I like to do. Like, I don't need nobody breathing all on top of me and huffing and puffing on top of me. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's good when it's good, but goddamn. But I just felt like that question was not needed. You did not need to ask me that question. And like, stuff like that is a real turn off to me. Like, instantly, that's a turn off. Like, who the fuck you talking to like that? That's that be me. Like, who the fuck is you talking to like that? He tried to cut me off, but that was when I just basically, you know, redirected it to me answering the damn question. You know, we sat there, we enjoyed our meal. That was the one question that I really wasn't feeling. But other than that, you know, he was really nice and being a gentleman. You know, Friday, he also wanted to go out in the evening to go out to dinner again. So Thursday, after I got out of class, he started texting me. Um, hey, how are you doing? How was your class? And um, I was like, it was great. Thanks for asking. And um, he was like, well, I'm going to go to sleep. And then next thing you know, he sent me a kissy goodnight picture. Now, it wasn't an emoji picture. Okay. It wasn't an emoji picture. It was him puckering up, kissing me a kiss picture goodnight. He was like, goodnight, my sweet, like with his lips puckered out. And I was like, okay. Now, mind you, people look totally different with their work uniforms on versus their not work uniforms on. So every time I would see him, he had on a FedEx baseball cap, some sunglasses and a FedEx uniform. So, you know, what do they say? Men look handsome in uniform. But when I seen him in person, like honestly, he reminded me of like one of those men from Duck Dynasty. You know, just, he's half Mexican and half white, but it all depends on, I think, the outfit that makes him appear either more white or more Mexican. He looked more like Duck Dynasty when I met him at the restaurant, okay? Just not the same person that I pictured in the uniform, okay? So then when he sent me the um, good night picture with the kiss, mind you, you could see the background and whatever he had hanging on his wall, he had not whatever it is what I saw it was the American flag so that definitely brought like Doug Dynasty vibes to me and he has a bald head and then he has like the beard here okay like the goatee so I was like and then the kissy up face was like whoa you're doing too much you're doing way too motherfucking much I was like good night I hope you sleep well this is what I'm saying okay Friday we were supposed to go out remember in the evening we were supposed to go to some place called the Spaghetti Factory I've never heard of it and then he wanted to go to the movies and I don't really do the movie theaters like like, I just don't want to sit in the movie theater. I don't just, I just don't. I cannot sit still that long without doing something. Like, if I got to sit and watch a movie, I got to be either editing a video or plucking or styling a wig. I can't just sit in the movie theater and not do anything. I feel like that's such a waste of time. When new movies come out, girl, I'm buying them off of, like, Fandango, Fandango now. You know, when you have HBO Max, they be coming up on there. And then I also have Paramount Stream, which is $50 for the whole year. And you get new movies like that, too. So... You know what I'm saying? And we also have a Disney channel. So you can, so it's like, okay, I could just watch every new movie basically that comes out. I don't really, I'm not sitting in the movie theater. And the movie that he wanted to go see was that new movie with Dwayne Johnson, you know, The Rock as a, um, on a, like a pirate ship type movie or something like that. Some Disney movie, like, I'm not, and I, I'm not about to sit in the movie theater and watch that neither. But I just was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? That's what we're supposed to do Friday evening, like about six o'clock. So when Friday came, Friday morning came. It was like about 10, 15. I had already done my little workout. I get a text message. She's good morning, whatever, you know. 
he asked me, would I be, would it be improper of me to ask you, hopefully you're not busy right now, if you can give me a ride to AutoZone because I'm at my sister's house fixing her car and she took my car. What it is is he drove to his sister's house to change her brakes, to put new brakes on her truck. And she took his car, his Toyota Corolla, to work. And once he finishes putting on the new brakes on her truck, he's going to drive her truck to her job and exchange cars. But his sister got the wrong brakes, so he couldn't drive anywhere. So he asked me, would I mind bringing him, giving him a lift to AutoZone? So I didn't want to seem mean. And I was like, okay, sure. So he gives me the address. I get in the car with my dog, with Penny. And we drive over there. Mind you, I, I would have known how far it was. I would have been like, I'm sorry, I'm busy. It was 23 miles each way. That's 46 motherfucking miles. Took me 30 minutes to get there. So when I pull up, you know, he comes out. And he comes out with the box of the brakes that he has to return to AutoZone and his water canteen. Girl, I'm like, why is he coming with his motherfucking water canteen? We going to AutoZone. What the fuck? Mind you, I got the taser in my car anyway. So it's like, you try me, motherfucker, you're going to be tased the fuck out of tased. So he get in the car. He was like, your car is so bougie. Because mind you, he's tall, so he has to pull a seat back. And he was like, my car, I'm like, my car is bougie. He was like, yeah, because where's the, the thing that move the seat? I was like, it's on the door up here. And so it's like on the side. And it looks like a seat. He's like, yeah, this is bougie. And it lights up. And like, you know, he's like, you even got your push start button thing blinged out. So yeah, I got my steering wheel blinged out. That blinged out. My fucking license plate blinged out. Okay, my car is not bougie. I don't really need to hear about my car being bougie. Okay, but whatever. Girl, why is AutoZone 1.5 miles from the sister's house? I'm like, 1.5 miles because I'm putting it on my get my GPS. That's it. That's a part of my car. He was like, oh, well, you could turn this. So I said, I, I have it. It's reading me the directions. I said, this is 1.5 miles from here. You could have walked to AutoZone. And he was like, well, you know, I don't want to walk. It's hot. And, you know, I smoke cigarettes. And I was like, well, you could have walked and smoked. What if I wouldn't have came? He was like, well, then I would have Ubered it. Then why didn't your motherfucking ass Uber that shit then? This is what I'm thinking. I didn't say it out loud, but this is what I'm thinking. So I drive there and me and Pancake we wait in the car okay we wait in the car and um he comes outside and he was like do I have ten dollars on me because he has to pay the difference for the breaks and he left his wallet at his sister's house I'm like no I do not have ten dollars on me but I'll come inside he's like I'll give it right back to you when you drop me off and I was like all right so you know I get inside go do that okay get back in the car pull up to the house he was like well you could pull in the driveway I was like for what he was like wait you're gonna come inside and hang out for a while I was like no what made you think that he was like you're just gonna drive off and I was like yeah, I have things to do today. And I'm not coming in your sister's house. I don't even know her. He was like, why? I was like, I don't know your sister. I, that, that's not right to go into people's houses and you don't know them. And he was like, well, she knew you was coming. I was like, your sister knew I was coming? He was like, yeah, I told her all about you. I'm like, okay. Just saying to myself, like, okay. Yeah, no. I'm not coming inside. I have things to do. So he goes in and he gets the $10 and he brings it back outside to me. All right. I drive off, you know, I go home, he says Scar goodbyes, I'm sitting in the car, we say goodbyes, and I'm like, please don't lean in or anything like that to kiss me because I don't play that shit, right? But mind you, while we're driving back to his sister's house, I forgot to tell you guys this. Why are you trying to rub my my knee? Like, don't do that. Just don't don't do that. Okay. And I'm like, don't do that. All right. That's that's me. I, I just don't like shit like that. All right. I just really don't like shit like that. So mind you, I get back home and I'm tired by by this time. Not even tired, but I, I smoked me a blunt. OK, a half a blunt. And now I'm relaxed. And then I'm sitting there plucking a wig before I got to go get my grandson. So I'm relaxed at this point. I don't even want to be bothered at the whole dinner at at six o'clock in the evening Friday it's Friday I just don't feel like being bothered um I don't know if it was the weed I don't know if it was the whole car ride 46 miles that pissed me off okay I don't know if it was the $10 shit I don't I don't know but either way I don't know if it was you rubbing on my knee I don't know what it was but I was not wanting to be bothered anymore after that okay so 
I told him that I had to do something with my kids and you know, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. And he understood. He was like, well, family come first. And I was like, that's great. That's what I'm saying to myself. That's great. So next day, Saturday, Saturday, um, Saturday night, I had my all my grandsons, you know what I'm saying? We have a little sleepover. It's my son's birthday weekend. So I got the grandkids over. We chilling. He asked me on Saturday, would I be willing to go out on like a, a lunch date on Sunday afternoon? And I said, okay, sure. He was like, all right, 12 noon it is. And I'm like, I never said what time. This is what I'm saying to myself. So I'm like, how about I let you know when my grandsons leave and I'll let you know what time we can meet up. He replied probably like three hours later. Sounds like a plan. I like that plan. Great. So Sunday morning came and went. Sunday afternoon, you know, my grandsons left like about 11 something. I was tired. Um, okay, so I didn't text you and, t and tell you what time to meet. we could meet up. I didn't feel like being bothered. And it wasn't even that I didn't feel like being bothered, but I was tired and I really wanted to get my work done. And I just was tired, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't speak to him at all on Sunday. He didn't text me and ask me what time um, the date was gonna be. And he didn't hear from him Sunday and he didn't hear from me. Now mind you, I did say, how about I text you you know what time my grandsons leave and then we can figure out the time to meet let me tell y'all monday morning at 5 11 a.m exactly okay i wish y'all could see this shit five e mind you he has an android phone okay i'm the one writing in green 5 11 a.m okay on fucking monday morning all right I get a text message. I look at the phone and it says on the new notification screen, Rich from FedEx. So I just put the phone down. Like, okay, maybe he's saying good morning because he has to be to work at 5.30, he was saying. And mind you, he worked, he's worked. he been working for FedEx 26 years, he told me. I thought it was 15, but it was 15 um, or 16 years out here in Arizona. But altogether, 26. But anyway, so I'm thinking that's him. So I don't even open the phone. I just put it down and go back to sleep because it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Why are you texting me? When I wake up and... Um, um, I get dressed and I finish doing all the things that I need to do. It's now about 7.10, okay? It's 7.10. I read the text message. The text message says, I can't imagine what happened in such a short amount of time that you that would make you ghost me? With a question mark. You went to extreme managers to find me? Question mark. Like, okay. So first of all, what made you even think that I ghosted you? Okay, because I didn't speak to you on Sunday. Yeah, it didn't even say it didn't even say good morning. It said I can't imagine what happened in such a short amount of time that would make you ghost me? Question mark. You went to extreme measures to find me? Question mark. Extreme measures. Um, you, you act like I fucking stalked the truck down, went and right, rode behind the shit, jumped on the top of it, stole somebody's package and re-delivered it like. That's extreme measures, okay? What I did was ask your coworker about you, and I didn't even ask for your phone number. I asked about you, and he offered me the number. So that's not extreme measures. So this is what I had to write back. Wow, first of all, it's way too early for drama. Second, who even said I ghosted you? Let's remember, I do have a family. Third, extreme measures, exclamation mark. I wouldn't even say all of that. You're reaching now. But if you like starting off your day on some bullshit, well, then have at it. Because over here, I don't start my day off on bullshit unless you paying me. But just enjoy your day because it seems like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. This is what I said to him. Because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, this is me in the green. Because remember, he's got an Android phone, okay? So then he writes back, look, I understand families first. I'm never trying to get in the middle of that. But you said you would let me know about lunch Sunday. Your words, not mine. If you had to cancel again, there would be nobody more understanding than me. You had your grandson. I get that but not even a call or a text question mark it's just rude i was very much looking forward to spending any in any time i could with you on sunday so now here i go like hold the fuck up all right i was like you know something for one i didn't appreciate the entire 46 mile drive when AutoZone was an entire 1.5 miles from you and you knew that that's what i call rude rude for even asking me to drive that distance when you knew how far i was that's right there is rude explanation mark also the phone works both ways instead of you sitting around pouting and waiting for a call maybe you could have reached out because i was just with four little boys and you don't really know what i was doing going through the time to come at me and say I could have reached out to you all he responded with was wow okay wow that's all he could say and that's how I left it okay I know y'all probably like girl no 
yeah, no, was not attracted to him after I seen him out of his uniform. And on top of that, there were some other things that I did not mention while we were sitting on the lunch date. We was talking about some song. I don't know the song. So he was like, well, here, look, look at the Pandora, my Pandora list. And so then I was looking through it. I said, oh, okay. I know that song. He was, I was like, you know, yeah, I, I, I know that song. You could, I could find that on, um, my, on Apple music. So he was like, oh, you got an iPhone? And I was like, yeah, I got an iPhone. And, um, um, he was like, well, I got the Samsung Galaxy 6. And I was like, well, uh, six, either 6 or 7, he said. And I was like, well, shit, I just got rid of an iPhone 6 Plus, you know. He was like, and what's, what is that you got? The iPhone 12 Pro? I can't remember his exact words, but basically it boiled down to, um, oh, so you just be paying on stuff. Like, did he say, like, not like that, but he was like, and you paying on that? And I was like, no, I'm not paying on it. I bought it. Cricket Wireless, you can't finance a phone. Or is that what it's called? Lease a phone and finance a phone? You can't finance a phone. You have to buy it. So we sitting there talking, and I just didn't like the fact that he was asking me questions like, he was saying something about, well, he would never pay so much for uh, for a phone. And I was like, no, I totally agree with you. I wouldn't either, but I'm going to be rocking this phone till the wheels fall off. That's, it just it just struck my nerve a little bit. And so that whole message early in the morning, like, don't text me 5 o'clock in the morning with some bullshit. Like, let's not do that because over here we don't do bullshit early in the morning unless you motherfucking paying me. That's right. I said that. Unless you're motherfucking paying me. So I, um, yeah, I didn't ghost him you the phone like i said works both ways i just didn't call you i don't have to call you i don't like clingy he was kind of clinging already like you telling your family about me that's weird and like sister vibes like you got like no I, i'm not with that that whole 46 mile drive like for you like walk your fucking fat ass to the goddamn auto zone it's a mile and a half and when i said that and i'm like well i walk a mile and a half sometimes too through garden lakes you know how big the route is like that's not even a distance to walk like yeah i'm not cool with that like i'm not saying i want to be top-notch youtube model but i want to be healthy and like you're displaying signs of laziness to me and on top of that you want to eat four chicken sandwiches at one given time like not cool with me like i know some people are probably gonna be like hey for you too picky but i'm not too motherfucking picky because i don't like shit like that and like you're not going to tell me what time we're going to meet up and you're not going to sit there and talk about my spending habits or shit like that. Like you're not, you, we don't do that. And don't touch me. Don't try to rub my knee. I don't like shit like that. And then that whole thing about that whole question about, do I miss being intimate? That was like way over border. That was over the border. That was over line. That was just like, that wasn't cool. And I don't like shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I'm not like, I just don't like shit like that. Like, don't do shit. Like, don't ask me shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know you like that. You deliver packages. You don't know me personally like that. And so I thought that that was a little bit out of line, a whole lot of out of line. Like now to me, I was starting to feel like, oh, you being fresh. No, now you, you being fresh and I don't like shit like that. So yeah, that was my like big issue. Number one big issue. But now that I done talked your motherfucking ears off, like seriously y'all let me know the comments down below girl like <laughs> so now y'all could give me y'all opinions okay down below all right are we just gonna make this a long real talk and now we're gonna get into the real real talk real talk so y'all know what to do if y'all want a real talk about yourself just we yeah let's just get into this real talk okay It's getting to me It's 
Real talk now. Hey, sis. And I'm calling you sis because I watched your channel so much, I feel like you're my big sis. LOL. Anyways, I guess I'll get straight to the point with this. My name is Ebony, quotations, fake name. She's writing this to me. I'm 33 and I'm a single mother with a 14 year old daughter. I live on my own and I'm very independent and I'm also teaching my daughter to be the same way as you should. For the past few years, I've let my grown niece, Brie, fake name, who's 22, stay with me off and on whenever she needs a place to stay. Because the decision she makes in life, she's always in need of help or in some kind of danger. A few days ago, she needed to get away from her abusive boyfriend. And of course, I let her stay with me because I, fe I felt bad for her. She said they were over, even though she's pregnant. But I'm not sure if she's telling the truth about it. Because on Instagram, she looked four months pregnant. But when she came over here, stomach was flat, flat. When she showed up, like always, she came in with her bags, goes straight to the guest room, and doesn't talk unless I start the conversation to ask her what's going on. She doesn't work, doesn't go to school, just sleeps all day, and that irritates my soul. I told her that I don't have any drama and don't need any drama in my home. Therefore, her boyfriend is not allowed at my house. After letting her stay for a few days, I told her that she could continue to stay, but if she's still here by the first of the month, she needs to pay to stay in the room as she's lived with me off and on for years without paying anything. The next day after talking to her about rent, her bags were packed and her abusive boyfriend was picking her up from my home. I'm really fed up with the back and forth and always needing a place to stay when things go wrong. But I'll feel bad if something happens to her. Mind you, we're in Vegas and her mother is in Texas, if that even matters. I need your advice because she only calls when she needs something. But I care for her. That's why it's so hard to not answer when she calls. Please help. Thanks. So we got Ebony here who's 33 years old and she got herself a 14 year old daughter who she's been teaching and grooming and letting her know that as a young woman and as a woman in general, we have to be independent, self-sufficient, basically stand on our own, be respectable and be ladylike, you know what I'm saying, being the woman that we are. So she's teaching her the right thing to do because as you should, that's what we're supposed to teach our children, young women, young young man we supposed to teach them this but um she's a single mom you know what i'm saying but also she has a 22 year old niece she has a grown niece 22 years old whose name is brie who she allow to come stay with her off and on when she needs a place to stay now the reason why she let brie stay with her off and on is because brie always getting into some bullshit either she getting herself into some trouble and danger or what have you so brie called her up you know and asked her could she stay with her for a while because her and her abusive boyfriend or going at it. Ebony was like, yeah, come over, girl, whatever. You got a place to stay. Brie comes in, goes straight to the guest room because she already been over there to stay. Didn't even say, hey, girl, what's up? Thank you for letting me. Hey, auntie, thank you for letting me stay with you. I appreciate it. Yada, yada, yada. She didn't do none of that. Like Ebony said, she'll just come in and go straight to the bedroom, to the guest room, and she won't say anything about a conversation unless... Who starts the conversation? Ebony. Ebony already let Brie ask no. Do not have your negative abusive boyfriend over here because she don't tolerate that. She don't want him coming over there. He is not allowed at her home and I respect that. This is my home. I'm going to let you stay here but honey, you're not about to bring the drama with you. We're not going to do that. All Brie do is sleep all day long. She don't got no job. She don't do shit. Not to mention Brie is supposed to be four months pregnant. Now Brie on Instagram looking all big, bloated and pregnant at the belly. But in person, she don't look pregnant at all. When she said her stomach is flat, flat. She, so she don't even know she really pregnant. She don't do shit all day. She don't work. She just sleep all day. And that is irritating Ebony's soul. But she also let Brie know Honey, if you still here on the first of the month, you're going to have to pay some rent to stay with me because you always staying here off and on and never paying for nothing. Well, the next day, Bree's shit was packed the fuck up. Her whole shit was packed up and she was packed up and her abusive boyfriend 
came through and picked her up and brought her back home. What should she do? You can't help those who don't want to help themselves. And that's straight up facts. You could lend your hand out and give a helping hand every day, every week, every month, every year. If that person don't want to help themselves, okay, then how are you going to continue to help them? You're not going to get but so far helping that young lady. Now, she don't want to work. She just want to be lazy and sleep all day. That that means right there, what's her baby going to have? How are you supposed to take care of a baby if you ain't got no income coming in for yourself? Fuck a man. Like, okay, fuck a man. When I say that, I don't mean that as in a disrespectful way, but it seemed like Brie ass can't keep a job or can't keep a, a good relationship going because she's back and forth, back and forth with the abusiveness. That's not a good relationship. She needs to find herself a good relationship. First, it starts right here and right here. Find a good relationship with yourself, okay? And not with a man because if you're in an abusive relationship and you're pregnant, girl, you got a whole world of trouble. She ain't got no job. She really ain't got no place to stay because if you had a place to stay, you wouldn't be leaving the home. The motherfucker who's abusive to you would be leaving the home. The girl need to get her shit together. That's what the fuck she need to do. This young lady needs to get her shit the fuck together. And sometimes, like I just said, you can't keep helping someone who don't want to help themselves. I will definitely extend a hand to a family member or even a really close friend. But if I continuously extend, extend you a hand and you only call me when you want something or need something, you're not calling me to say, hey, auntie, how's it going? How are you? Do you need anything? Just wanting to stop by and say hello. Just wanting to come over and just spend a little time with you. Just calling to check up on you. If you're not doing that, but you're only calling me when you need something, then that right there is going to get tiring and that's going to piss me the fuck off. Like now I feel like you're using me and basically you are using me. Um, Ebony, as far as family goes, we all have them, okay? Just like everybody got an asshole, everybody got a family member. We all have them. But does that mean that we want to put up with the whole shit all the time? No, we don't want to put up with a whole bunch of shit all the time. And sometimes family will be the ones that will tear you down because the key word is family. So they feel like because they are of that statue to you, statue to you, that they can lean on you, okay? Rock on you, okay? Ask for a helping hand on you. You know what I'm saying? Sleep on your couch on you. They feel like that is an obligation because they are, you know what I'm saying? Family. And family will do you in. Family sometimes be the first ones to do you in. Those that ain't even related to you by blood or by a piece of paper, those two people sometimes are more family to you than the ones that are related to you, related to you. So I'm just saying, when I say that, meaning a friend could be so good to you that they better than your real family members. So just because you family don't mean that you got to give in, give up, you know what I'm saying, all the time, okay? So just because you family don't mean that I got to extend a helping hand and then another helping hand. Like, I don't got to add an extension on that motherfucker. And that's what you do when you add an extensions on Bree's um, welcome and stay. If that girl got the fuck up after you talked to her about motherfucking rent, Ebony, then let me tell you something. That should be the last motherfucking time you extend your hand to her. If she not calling you to check up on you, or she only calling you when you when she need and wants something, then sweetheart, that goes to show you right there how your relationship is with her. You are nothing. She is giving you nothing but her ass to kiss when she needs something. And I'm sorry, but honey... It's time to get a job and get out of an abusive relationship. That's what you need to do. What you're not going to do is sleep up in my guest room. It's a guest room, honey. You are no longer a guest when you keep coming back and forth, staying there. And then you want to pack your shit up and get the fuck out when I tell you about rent. That day right there goes to tell you that that girl don't want to pay no mind, no payment, no rent, no attention, no nothing, okay? She ain't even got a job to take care of her kid. Sleep all day? Let me tell you this. Y'all remember when I used to tell you my daughter Tati, she lived here with me. She's 25 years old now. She hasn't lived here with me in over a year and a half, okay? Um, remember how I told you she would sleep all day and do nothing and be lazy and shit like that? That shit was under my skin, irritate the fuck out of me. I can't stand no shit like that. I don't put up with no shit like that. That shit is irritating, especially when I bust my ass and work all day and do the fucking shit I gotta do. Hell to the no, I'm not about to have nobody up in my motherfucking house sleeping all day, sleeping all day and nothing, doing nothing with their time. You got to be out your motherfucking raggedy ass mind. If you think that's what's about to happen over here. 
No, sweetheart. Where she is at is where she needs to be. Now, you don't even know what's going on in their relationship to know if he's abusive or what's what. But this is what I will tell you. Okay, Ebony? Keep your two cents out of it and mind your business. Sometimes that's the best thing for anybody to do is keep your two cents out of it and mind your business. Therefore, she won't be calling you up and asking you for rides, home visits, home stays, couch sleepovers, guest sleepovers, or none of that shit. When she packed her shit up and got the fuck up out of there because you said something about the rent and the bills girlfriend that's when your extended stay vacation come over when you need me it's definitely over voided revoked okay now if that's your sister's daughter then i accept i expect you to have a conversation with your sister about her child and let her deal with her daughter accordingly okay sometimes you gotta step back and mind your motherfucking business if that's your brother's daughter then i expect you to have a conversation with him but sweetheart auntie ebony's doors are closed and so is your cabinet Okay, I don't know about y'all, but it's great to help family, but sometimes you got to put a stop to shit. And if a person don't want to help themselves, then you can't really do much by helping them. As far as being pregnant, but if she looked four months pregnant on Instagram and then when you seen her in person, her stomach was flat, flat. Like I said, sweetheart, stay out of it. Mind your business and keep your opinions to yourself. Because sometimes when your opinions are out in the open, honey, those little bit of opinions, okay, be a world of trouble. Stay out of it. If she is faking them, if she is faking moves, if she isn't pregnant, it'll come to the light. Trust me, everything always comes to the light, sweetheart. Give Ebony your opinions down below, and you can definitely give me your opinions too. Y'all know me. I, listen, let me tell y'all this. I thought that I would like to, you know, get to meet people and stuff, you know, but I, I, I'm cool with not being in a relationship. I, I like my single life. I really, really do. If, if this is my comfort zone of me just being single and family oriented, then that's my comfort zone. And I'm cool with that. You know, I've been with the same person for over 22 years. So what do you expect? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want people touching me. I don't, I don't think certain things should be asked to me you know what i'm saying and, and that's just how i feel and maybe yeah i still do care very much so for my ex-husband i do i will always love him and y'all know that but how how the whole relationship went about at the end was so fucking wrong but um do i blame him for me not wanting to date anybody i could i could but hey that's my choice i just don't you know what i'm i'm cool and i don't want to date anybody i'm fine you know what i'm saying i like my single life some people probably feel like girl you bugging but like i i love being single like i really really do and I'm just cool with that, you know. I think it's, it has a lot to do with the person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. We never, we didn't work out. And that's unfortunate. And that's what I made my mind up as to who I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And because it didn't work out like that, I really don't want to be bothered with anybody else. You know what I'm saying? I, I've invested a whole half of my life with that one person. And that's where my heart went. I don't want to be back with him. I really don't. Like, it just taught me something. And I'm... I'm very thankful for that lesson, but I also enjoy my life the way it is. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only woman in the world that feels that way. That um, a whole date thing, I'm good with the whole dating thing. But you guys could leave your opinions down below. What did you think of my date, girl? <laughs> I love you guys and I'll see y'all on the next one.